Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. We've got a fun fact-filled video for you today all about Saucony and their 2023 lineup. We'll be chatting about six of their main line road shoes, putting them through their paces, giving you all my thoughts, and most importantly, how to fit these shoes into rotation, what they're good for, what they're not good for, and all of that stuff to help you with your shoe buying decisions. Sit back, relax, let's get the Saucony 2023 lineup done. Great to see you joining us for another video. I've had loads of fun over the last few weeks and months testing out these shoes. As always, we'll put the timestamps up on the side of the screen now. We're gonna talk about the facts and figures and really sort of most important with this video is what they're good for, what you're gonna be using these specific shoes for in your training. As always, I bought these shoes 100% with my own money. It cost me pretty much a thousand pounds to put this video together. So thank you so much for everyone that supports the channel. Just liking the video, subscribing, sharing with your friends and checking out the website benparks.com where you can pick up this sweater and loads of amazing merch and the best running hats in the world to help with your running. Please do check it out. So the Endorphin Elite is Saucony's highest end, most expensive full on race shoe. They've developed this all new Power Run HG foam that's come out in this shoe. It has a carbon plate in here as well. It is super, super stiff. 254 grams for my size, eight millimeter drop, and a stack of 40 mil at the legal limit on the back. 280 pounds, a lot of cash to be dropping on a shoe like this. In terms of purpose, what it's for, half marathons and marathons in my eyes, maybe even longer, maybe a possible Comrade shoe. Stay tuned for my shoe selection for Comrades coming up next week. You can be using this for your speed sessions, but essentially this is what a shoe you wanna be wearing when you want to be running your absolute fastest. In terms of my likes with this shoe, it's a very, very fast shoe, no doubt about that. It's very lively, it gets you up on your toes and rolling really nicely. Good breathability through the shoe as well, getting a good amount of airflow in there. Solid lockdown, really like how this lacing has worked. This is this um, gusseted tongue here, just really comfortable around that area, no slipping around. Also, good on the wide side as well, if you're someone that wants a fast shoe, has a wider foot, really good there. This new super foam really is the real deal, right up there with the likes of Nike and Asics and what they're offering as well. I used it in a half marathon quite recently. We'll put some of the footage up now. I was really happy with the time that we did there. In terms of the negatives of the shoe, could be a positive, but it has a very aggressive rocker here at the front. And when I was running in this shoe, I did develop some plantar fasciitis issues, which I've never had before. So yeah, I really have to put that down to the shoe, just in how on the foot is really sort of stretched out there with how the shoe sort of points your toes up. Price, 280 quid. It is firm, this shoe. So if you like a firm shoe, that's gonna be a big positive for you. If you like a big squishy shoe, then really not so much. And as I said earlier, it's a very much a racing shoe. You're only running fast in this one only. It's a bit clumpy if you wanna be doing some longer, easy runs in it. It's a bit just awkward at slower speeds. Right, let's move on to the Triumph 20. So this is the Triumph 20, the 20th iteration of the Triumph shoe. The heavier shoe here, about 324 grams for me. All these weights, by the way, are in my particular UK size 12. Nice power run midsole, no plate in the shoe. Pretty squishy there. 10 millimeter drop between the back and the front. 30 cell mil, 30 se 37 millimeter uh, stack height at the back and coming in at about 155 pounds here in the UK. Now in terms of the purpose of the shoe, it's a max cushion shoe. So you're talking this for your easy runs, your longer runs, or your recovery run day. Some of your slower, easier running. That sort of 80% of the week, if you stick to that, would be good in a shoe like this. Very soft, very squishy. It's gonna look after your legs really well out when you're pounding the pavements and building up that mileage. In terms of the pros of this shoe, it is super comfortable. Good lockdown, good breathability through the shoe as well as it's warming up here in the UK now. And used it on a couple of my longer runs and just found it absolutely no issues, no hot spots. Just love that sort of cushioning. And it's a little bit responsive. I mean, when you took it up to speed, you're not getting that much out of it. It's not designed for that. If you just want something that's super comfortable, slip it on, it's gonna give you no issues. This shoe really delivered there. Also another positive is the grip on the bottom of the shoe. This rubbery outsole here. 
I haven't got any footage of me running it in the wet, but when we did a couple of times, really, really good grip on the pavements. So yeah, just a really good jack of all trade shoe, giving me no issues, not particularly exciting, but if you just want to build up some nice solid miles. In terms of the negatives, it is a little bit on the narrow side. The laces really aren't that long. By the time you sort of locked it down and done a couple of laces, if you are going to be doing a bit of a run that's not there, you might well run out of a bit of lace there. Overall, pretty good, nice, solid daily shoe. Quickly guys, if you are finding the video useful, please smash that like button and answer today's question of the day is, what is your favorite Saucony shoe? Are you a fan of the Saucony shoes? Or do you prefer some other brands? And would you like to see us do this type of video with another brand? Let us know down in the comments and we'll get those shoes in. Right, back to the video. Right, let's move on. What's next? Let's pick up the Kinvara. So the Kinvara model now in its 14th iteration. Stockton has been going for a long time. They really know how to make some awesome running shoes. Neutral shoe, that sort of power run foam midsole and no plate in this shoe. You've got a four millimeter drop, 31 mil stack at the back of the shoe and coming in around about 125 pounds. Something you want to be doing some of your tempo work in, your shorter rep sessions. In terms of race distances, your 5K, 10K up to half marathon in something like this. It's just a sort of speed shoe without the plate. Uh, basically is the best way to describe it. And talking about the pros, it's very lightweight, the lightest weight shoe here. You really feel that as you're running. If you want to pick up the pace, you're really going to notice that nice lightweight feel. But it has put on a little bit of weight since the version before as well. We'll come on to some of those controversies in a minute in the negatives. Again, really good breathability. You can be able to see my fingers through the shoe here. And I'm just loving this sort of like metallic-y colorway. You just put it on, it feels fast. Some of the really nice materials they've used this sort of, I'm not sure if this is like an Alcantara here, but it's just really nice, it's really smart, great colorway. And yeah, you just feel fast when you put this shoe on, it just gives you a really good sense of confidence. But for me, some of the plated shoes are gonna be a little bit faster. But if you don't like that feeling, then this is definitely a good one to go for. Now in terms of the negatives, I really think with the 13 and the sort of iterations before, they had a really nice low profile option out there, which is disappearing from a lot of running shoe buying markets. Now everyone's got big stack heights out there and that's what they've done with this one. So yeah, I wish they kept it a bit more of a lower profile, a little bit like the street fly to be perfectly honest. And you've had a good section of the market that likes that. The high stack height, it's all right, but it would be nice to have a bit of a lower racing flat sort of feel as the Kinvara was before. Also, the outsole is completely exposed here. There's just a couple of higher wearing rubber parts on the bottom of here. But yeah, I've done about 15, 20K in this shoe so far in a couple of sessions, and already it's really starting to wear away. The durability in this shoe will not be good. It's just not gonna last long. There's just nothing there to protect that midsole. It's really one to maybe keep your all important speed sessions, and then that sort of 5K park run effort where you really wanna open up the legs and give it your all. Well, let's move on to the Endorphin Speed 3. A bit like this, but with a place in it, basically. Now, I haven't got the Endorphins B3. I had it last year when we had it in for testing to do all the proper videos, but Saucony have kept it into their range this year as well. So for this shoe, one of my absolute standout favorite shoes of last year, coming in about 270 grams from me, um, the Power Run PB foam cushioning in this one, and it has a nylon plate in it. So a lightweight plate, not super stiff like the Super Shoes, but it's just giving you that little bit of extra little bit of help without overloading your calves a little bit too much. Eight millimeter drop, 36 mil stack at the back, about 165 pounds. Purpose of a shoe like this, it's your speed sessions, it's your intervals, it's your 5K, 10K half marathon. I wouldn't want to run a marathon in this. I just like a little bit more cushioning for those super long distances and probably a carbon plate in there as well. The turnover and the feeling of running this shoe was just fantastic. One of the best, as I say, one of the best shoes I ran in last year. So versatile, you can use this for all sorts of running. You could pretty much use this as a daily trainer if you weren't doing too many long runs. If you're someone that's training for a 5K, 10K half marathon, you could use this all the time. Great stability, really good cornering, really good grip in the dry as well. But on the flip side, it really didn't have much any sort of grip and rubber on the bottom. So yeah, it was a little bit slippy when we used it in some slightly wetter conditions. 
Right, moving on, let's have a chat about the Endorphin Pro 3, which uh, we've got some footage of me running at a track in Edinburgh in this one. It came out in the middle of last year, but Saucony have kept it in their range. It hasn't had an update yet for 2023. So in terms of the shoe, 259 grams for me, power on PB foam cushioning, and a carbon plate in the shoe. Really, really on the stiff side. Eight millimeter drop, 40 mil stack height at the back of the shoe, and coming in about 210 pounds. Over 200 pounds, but really not too bad as you get into that super shoe, shoe, that super shoe segment. Purpose of a shoe like this, well, your races, your speed sessions, your faster work, and it was stocking his premium shoe before they've developed the um, Elite Pro, the Elite, <laughs> the Elite Pro, no, just the Elite. This is the Pro. Uh, it was their premium shoe before that came along. Really, this for me is your 10K up to that marathon distance. And what I like so much about this shoe, it's just that great mix of cushion and speed without sort of breaking the bank. I think you've got to be so strong and so elite to really get the most out of the um, elite shoe. But for your, maybe for, for your more sort of like 245, three hour, four hour, five hour type runner, this is definitely the shoe to go for if you're looking for that marathon shoe. It's really solid at all speeds, comfortable, lightweight, and also in contention for my Comrade shoe as well. So as I say, stay tuned for that video coming up very soon. On the negatives, it really is a little bit too narrow. So again, if you are a bit of a wider footed runner, you're, you're gonna suffer a little bit on this. Some of these garish colors, this pink way, I'm a fan of the pink gloves, as you guys know, but this one is a big no for me. But yeah, in summary, really fast, really enjoyed it, comfortable. Whether it's faster than a Nike, that's always up for debate. In my testing, when we compared it to some of the Alpha Flies, it was just as good as those. Not, certainly not better, but just as good. And finally, just wanna have a quick chat about the Endorphin Shift 3. Now, I haven't managed to get this one in, and I've just raided my bank buying all of these shoes for testing, and I haven't managed to get that one as well. Uh, but yeah, for the Endorphin Shift 3, it's part of the Endorphin range. They're sort of easy, everyday shoe. Um, as I say, I haven't actually been testing it, but just some basic facts and figures if you're interested in a sort of max stack um, of 39 mil, loads of foam in there to look after you on those longer runs. About a four millimeter drop, and coming in around about 140 pounds. I have run in the previous models of this, and really enjoyed it. And it's a slightly supportive shoe as well. So all these shoes so far have all been neutral shoes, but a little bit of support on that inside arch there. Perfect for your easier days, your long run days. I'm not sure why it's in their like endorphin collection, which is their sort of pre more premium, faster shoes. But yeah, I know, I'm not in Socrates marketing team. Maybe you guys know, let me know down in the comments. <laughs> Right guys, let's just have a really super quick summary. So if you're looking for the lighter shoe here, then it's gonna be the Kinvara. The best for like long distances, I'd say something like the Pro, if you're a more beginner, intermediate, even more an advanced marathon runner, something like that. Best all rounder, could even be the Endorphin Shift, or if you like to do lots of speed sessions and races, then the Saucony Speed would be the best all rounder. Best for beginners, definitely something like the Triumph 20. It's just gonna really look after you in those early days of your running journey. Cheapest Kinvara, best for racing. I would definitely say the uh, Pro, if you are an elite runner, then by all means give the elite a good look. If you've got all the money in the world, then get something like that. But I think this is just the best, most sensible all round option for your racing. In terms of building a rotation, there's something like this, the, the, the Triumph 20 and the Pro will be a really good rotation. If you don't want the all out full on carbon plate, then mix the Triumph with the Saucony Speed. That would be my best bit of advice. So there we have it guys. Hope you found the video useful. Let us know what are your favorite Saucony shoes. Next up, we'll be testing out all of the whole Hoka range as well. If you've raided the bank account to bring that video to you, and I've enjoyed putting those through their paces. So that'll be coming up very, very soon. Stay tuned for all the Comrades content. That's it. Keep on working hard, keep on getting it done, and we'll see you very soon in the next one.